Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to get rid of mid-back pain and particularly pain around the upper shoulder blade area that could radiate pain into your neck, your shoulders and your mid-back. We spend so much time hunched over texting on our phones or working at a desk where our shoulders are forward and your head is forward and that can cause the upper back muscles to spasm and radiate a lot of pain in your neck and shoulders. Our muscles in the front, for example, the shoulder muscles and the chest muscles get quite tight as well. And the muscles at the back are constantly in a lengthened position and the spine is in a fixed position for a long period of time that can cause a lot of stiffness and stress around the cervical and thoracic junction. I want to show you some exercises to loosen this up and also strengthen the upper back muscles to improve your posture and prevent pain and also give you a better upright position that can prevent you from arthritis and degenerative change. I hope these exercises help you as much as they helped me and my patients. Thoracic Mobility Test First, we need to assess which side is most restricted and has poor range of motion. Go on all fours with your elbows as close to your knees as possible and have your forearms together. Try to have your bum pushed back towards your feet as well. This will separate the shoulder blades apart as much as possible and open up the spaces of the intervertebral discs by flexing the spine. Imagine you are in a small pipe they can only fit your body for this test. Place the hand on the side you're trying to stretch on your waist, then raise your elbow as high as possible whilst keeping your other elbow and knees on the floor. In this position, squeeze your mid back muscles, pulling the shoulder blades together and pressing your other elbow into the floor. This will contract mainly the rhomboids, the rear deltoids and the serratus anterior muscle on the stabilizing shoulder on the floor. This will rotate the thoracic spine stretching the shoulder and chest muscles that are usually pulling your shoulders into a rounded position and causing you to hump your back. Take note on how far your elbow can move without lifting your other elbow and knees off the floor. Repeat this on the other side. I appear pretty even, but if you pause the video, it appears that my left shoulder is slightly more restricted compared to the right shoulder with only 45 degrees of rotation. As for my right shoulder, it appears to have up to 55 degrees of rotation, meaning 10 degrees more than my left shoulder. This means I need to free up my upper back more on my left side, which makes a lot of sense since I do have a lot more tightness and soreness on the left shoulder and neck. I find the best way to get non-biased footage of yourself for self-assessment is to place a video camera on the floor such as your phone vertically as possible following the lines of the floorboards or the tiles of your house to make sure you're centered your camera correctly. I use the floorboards to guide me to center the camera correctly. As you can see, my hand that's on the floor is directly center on the camera. Thoracic spine rotations. Just like most good assessments, the exercise or the rehabilitation conditioning exercise is quite similar for what you're trying to target. To do this exercise, go on all fours and get your elbows and knees as close together as possible with your bum pushed back close to your feet, imagining that you're in a small pipe or tunnel. Start with both forearms as close to each other as possible, then place the back of your hand on the side that you're trying to mobilize on the waist and raise your elbow up in a slow and controlled manner towards the ceiling. Do this without lifting any of your other limbs or moving out of the imaginary tunnel or pipe. This will help you isolate the movement into your shoulders and your upper back. Make sure you contract the mid back muscles, especially the muscles that pull your shoulder blades together to create upper back rotation. Do this by pulling the shoulder blade from the grounded shoulder simultaneously towards the other shoulder blade. To accentuate the movement better, you can try to use your eye to look further beyond your elbow towards the ceiling. By doing this, it will work on the rhomboid muscles, the rear deltoid muscles, and some of your shoulder stabilizing muscles, and most importantly, mobilize the spine and upper back. This will reduce the pain in the neck, shoulders, and your upper back, and strengthen the muscles as well. Then bring your elbow back down, rounding your shoulders, and repeat the process again. Do this for 10 to 20 repetitions on both sides, three to four sets. Some mistakes people tend to do 
is raising one knee or one of the arms off the floor, allowing them to twist easier and better. This won't isolate the movement into your shoulders and your upper back, rendering this exercise useless. If you push too hard and you don't have the mobility to do so, you may lose balance and move out of the imaginary tunnel or pipe where you're meant to be in the first place. Just take it nice and slow and with patience and frequency, you'll get there, don't worry. Threading the needle rotations. Go on all fours on your hands and knees whilst having your torso parallel to the floor. Your hands and knees should be square to your shoulders. Now bring the hand on the side that you want to mobilize all the way out to the other side through the gap between your knee and your stabilizing hand, stretching this shoulder. Both arms should be straight as possible, locking out the elbows. Try to reach as far as possible past your thigh if you can. This will stretch and pull the shoulder blade away from the mid back. When you reach as far as you can, bring your hand back in a slow and controlled manner towards your ear on the same side of your hand. In a fluid motion, keep your hand there and let your elbow lead the way and raise it up towards the ceiling, twisting and rotating the upper back. Make sure you squeeze the upper back muscles such as the mid trapezius muscle and the rhomboid muscle. Pull your elbow back as far as you can to stretch out the muscles in front of the body that restricts this movement, such as your chest and front shoulder muscles. These muscles cause slumping in the back and rounded shoulders. To help guide this movement, try to look where you're intending to move. This will accentuate the movement and activate the necessary muscles in your mid back for this exercise. Do this for 10 to 20 repetitions on both sides, three to four sets. This is one of my favorite exercises to do to warm up for Olympic weightlifting and it gives me a lot of pain relief and stiffness from desk posture. In 2013, the Journal of Physical Therapy Science published a case study on the effect of thoracic stretching, thoracic extension exercises for cervical and scapular posture on thoracic kyphosis angle and upper thoracic pain. A 36-year-old male complained of upper back pain with forward head posture with rounded shoulders did a series of stretches and thoracic extension exercises. The results showed that after a few sessions, the upper back hump decreased and the pain tolerance improved. I really hope the exercises in this video give you the same results, if not better results, to help you gain better posture and most importantly, live life without pain. Go on all fours and have your forearms flat against the ground and reach in front of you as far as you can. Then bring your bum back as far as you can. If it hurts too much, just go to the point where it's tolerable. Now push your head through your shoulders as far as you can so you can move your ears past your arms. Then bring your head back up again, rounding the upper back. To accentuate the rounding of your upper back, you just need to squeeze your chest muscles and possibly press into the ground with your elbows. Do this for 10 to 20 repetitions, four to five sets. Start doing exercises on your forearms, especially if you've got wrist pain. A lot of health professionals out there like myself, physios, chiros, and osteopaths really love prescribing the cat-cow exercise for lower back pain and sciatica. This is a variation of cat-cows to mobilize your upper back and reduce upper back pain. It will also stretch your shoulder muscles out, increasing mobility and flexibility in your shoulders for overhead movements. This will help you get a stronger and more stable position for such sports that require you to hold weights above your head, for example, the gymnastics handstand and Olympic weightlifting, therefore preventing injuries from compensating muscles and joints due to poor range of motion and flexibility. Trust me, I see quite a lot of people injured just because they had poor range of motion or they didn't warm up properly before doing the exercise or playing the sport or doing the sport they enjoy. There's a lot of rotational exercises for thoracic mobility on social media, but I want you to take note that it's very important to also explore the range of motions of the thoracic spine in flexion and extension as well, since we do spend a lot of time with our arms in front of us, causing us to have 
a hunchback in thoracic flexion. So flexion extension is very important to give us thoracic mobility for upright posture and also improve pain and stiffness from our neck and shoulders. To accentuate the mobilization of your shoulders and thoracic spine, you can do this exercise on your hands with straight arms. Just have your arms straight out and your arms extended, locked out as much as possible. Then stretch all the way out in front of you and push your head through your shoulders, squeezing your shoulder blades together. Then pull your head back up again, pushing through your hands and squeezing your chest muscles and slightly pushing into the floor to round your back. Do this for 10 to 20 repetitions, 4 to 5 sets. This will push your thoracic spine into both ends of range of motion, into full flexion and full extension. When I was doing this, I heard some pops and cracks in my back. So don't be surprised or alarmed if you hear some pops and cracks. It's just gas bubbles being released from your intervertebral discs and most of the time it feels really good. This will also work on the serratus muscle, which is very important for shoulder health and reduce the chances of shoulder dislocation and increases shoulder stability, which prevents scapular winging or rotator cuff injuries. If you want to accentuate the mobilization, but being on your wrist is too painful because you're possibly suffering from wrist injuries or wrist strain or even carpal tunnel, you can always do this on yoga blocks and if you don't have yoga blocks, you can just use some thick telephone books. Place your forearms onto the yoga blocks and this will raise your forearms and therefore increase the distance for your head to go through towards the floor. Stretch your arms out as far as possible and lean your bum back. Then push your head through your shoulders, bring your ears past your arms. Then back up again, squeezing your chest and serratus muscles as if you are trying to do a half push up through your shoulders. Do this for 10 to 20 repetitions, 4 to 5 sets. This movement will promote fluid exchange in the intervertebral discs and lubricate the discs and joints at the same time, mobilizing the area and therefore increasing mobility and strength into the joints. This is a great rehabilitation and conditioning exercise. If you have upper back pain or you just want to mobilize your upper back so you don't get a hunchback in the long term, I highly recommend you do this exercise, even if you don't have upper back pain. Especially if you spend a lot of time at a desk playing games on your phone or texting. I do this myself even to improve my posture and it gives me a lot of pain relief from my upper back and neck pain. What's well, you guys? Thanks for watching. I really want you to join my VIP Facebook group. I want to build a community there where you can ask questions and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as possible. There'll be other health professionals in that group as well to be able to help you out. Now if you found this video helpful, I highly recommend you check out my rhomboid massage video. This video will help you release a lot of tension in the mid back that could be causing a lot of pain around the shoulder blade area and also into the front of the shoulders as well. Now if you do have pain that could be radiating into the front of the shoulders and down the wrists, it could be coming from the infraspinatus muscle. So I highly recommend you check out my infraspinatus muscle massage video. That video will definitely help you out, reduce a lot of pain around that area, and also prevent a lot of injuries in the future. Remember to support my channel, hit like, hit subscribe, comment below if you have any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next one.